I'm gonna just say it. Facebook curly hair groups are toxic as <sighs> I feel better. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chucky, also known as Curly Boy Chuck. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, you rock. Today, I'm going to be diving deep, 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 deep into the world of Facebook hair groups and why some of them need to be shut down for good. So let me just preface this by saying that not all Facebook hair groups are toxic. Some are fantastic and amazing and I will have links to the ones that I personally am following and really think are healthy and amazing. So just know it's not all curly hair Facebook groups that are toxic, but there is some and particularly one individual Facebook group that I had to leave because it just was so incredibly cultish and toxic and there was so much misinformation and it was just a hot mess. So let's get right into my experience. So I'm not gonna be too messy in this video, meaning I am not going to name the Facebook group that I left that is very toxic because I don't wanna be a T channel or a messy channel calling people out, that's just not my thing. But I do wanna share my experience because I think it is my right to share my experience on my platform. So this Facebook group caters to wavy, curly, and kinky, hair types. So I never had any real issues with any individual person myself, but I definitely would see things that were like, hmm. One thing that I noticed within this group that stood out to me that made zero sense is that they were making up their own rules about what curly hair is versus what wavy hair is. And I noticed that a lot of curlies in the group were being corrected, <laughs> like people with ringlets like me were being corrected, being told that their hair is not curly. Their hair is wavy. There is not a curl in sight and that they were misinformed. And when a person would push back and say, but wait a minute, I have ringlets and, and my hair, it doesn't wave, it curls all the way through. It was like, no, it is wavy. Like literally, it was crazy to me. Like I would look at these pictures and I'm just like, am I seeing what they're seeing or am I being punked? Like what's going on? So in their opinion, curly hair, if it doesn't start directly at the root, like I'm talking about like right here, if there isn't a curl coming out of your head, right here it doesn't matter if there's curls everywhere else you are not a curly you cannot call yourself a curly how dare you call yourself a curly it is blasphemy it is wrong it is a sin it will be cast out it was crazy to me how strict they were and in my opinion how misinformed they were because it's been my experience that curly hair comes in many different forms and many different patterns you can have different curl types on one head you can have some wavy portions and really curly portions, but guess what? That doesn't make you a wavy. <laughs> it makes you a curly because you have ringlets. If you have ringlets, you have curly hair. Now, if you have to use a lot of manipulation to get a curl pattern, then yes, I would question how curly your hair actually is. But I know for me, when I wet my hair, my hair gets curly immediately. And when I put styling products in my hair, even if I don't manipulate it by doing coils or finger rolls, my hair will still curl like you see today. I didn't do any manipulation on my hair. I literally just raked the product through my hair and scrunched and that was it and diffused. And what you see are curl patterns. That means I have curly hair. So this group continued with this, you know, if your hair has any, any waves, you're a wavy. You cannot call yourself a curl. You are over typing and it is offensive. Okay. So last week, I posted a video of myself and I will show you the video that I posted. It was a like before after wash hair day, just showing, you know, what my hair looks like and pretty much showing how I have ringlets on my hair and I have different curl patterns in my hair and just, you know, celebrating my curls. And I got majority great comments, great feedback. Then I had <laughs> one person in this group who literally posted a reply to my post and said, wow, your hair is really nice, but I'm really curious. And then she put at the moderator, is his hair curly or is his hair wavy? Cause I don't see curls at the root of his head, but I do see them throughout his hair. So I need to know what is his hair type? That's interesting. To ask someone what their hair type is, but to not ask them directly, to ask another person who you do not know to diagnose your hair. <laughs> like what is going on right now? Like you're literally posting on my post, which I can see, and you are asking other people 
to diagnose my hair type and to tell me what my hair type is as if I'm not even in the room. So I thought that was funny and knowing this particular hair group, I was kind of prepared for some of those comments because they again are very cultish when it comes to what is curly hair and what is wavy hair. So I replied and I said, I believe my hair is curly or type three because I have majority spirals or ringlets in my hair that just form naturally. I do have some waves, but they're not drastic and literally like 90% of my hair is is spirals or curls. So she pretty much kind of ignored that response and didn't even respond directly to me. She then went and um, tagged another person in the group who was like a group expert, I guess like a co-administrator, I don't know, I don't know. And she tagged her in it and she was just like, you know, what do you think? Is his hair curly? Is his hair wavy? And I'm sitting here like, they're literally having a conversation about me as if I'm not even like present. Like, this is so funny to me. So the girl responds and she's like, um, well, you don't really know a person's curl type when their hair is wet or styled. You have to see what their hair is like when their hair is completely dry to see if they are curly or wavy. That's the only way to really tell. Really? <laughs> I was always told that the best way to know what your curl type is, is to have your hair wet and to have your hair styled because then that way you can see how your hair naturally forms after it is styled and wet. If your hair is dry, most of the time your hair is going to be frizzy, it's going to be tangled, and it's not going to really form any curls because your hair is in desperate need of moisture. So that right there was a flag because I've never heard of that before. You know, like I know that you definitely can see a person's hair pattern when it's dry, but you definitely can see it more upfront and more prominent when their hair is wet and when their hair is styled with product. So I'm gonna read to you <laughs> the conversation and what I had what I had said pretty much or pushed back on on this particular person. I'm gonna post it on here as well. So I said, referring to the hair chart, and yes, I know it's inconsistent, isn't the breakdown category based on the different hair patterns? I've never seen anyone with natural ringlets be in type two, regardless if the ringlets don't form at the root. That's an interesting take. So in other words, cause she was saying, well, it has to form at the root, it has to form at the root or it is not curly hair, period, end of story. And my thing is if you look at the hair chart, which I know is inconsistent, I did a whole video on it. So trust me, I know that. But however, the hair chart is broken down into categories based on the patterns of the hair. And if you look at type two, it is wavy. If you look at type three, it is curly. Those are two different patterns. So how you can put somebody with ringlets in the type two category of waves makes no sense. So um, her response, have you read our educational material regarding hair types? There is labor provided on those and you are encouraged to read them. Well, all right then, let's go read them. So pretty much she was trying to tell me, I don't have time to answer your questions, read our rules. There was labor put into those rules. You should read them. So let's look at some of the rules that they put as far as the breakdown for hair according to their definition. So in their post, they put wavy hair type two characteristics. The curl or wave doesn't start from the root, but further down the hair strand. Your curl slash wave falls or drops out a day or two after washing. FYI, that never happens to me. My curls stay curly the whole week, never falls out. Hair is mostly S waves. Wavy hair, contrary to popular opinion, can form spirals on the lower half of the hair. Unless the spiral is from root to tip, however, that's still wavy hair. The length and weight of the hair can pull waves flat. So now let's look at the characteristics according to them for curly hair. Curly hair, type three characteristics. The curl is a tight cylindrical spiral that starts at the root, at the root, still curly when wet, Curls don't drop easily, not affected by weight or length of hair, really. So that's where I disagree because like I said, I do believe that the weight of the hair is going to affect the curl pattern if you have long, heavy hair. Then they go on to post some pictures of what they believe is accurate curly hair versus wavy hair. And I found these pictures to be very interesting because they chose pictures of people with short curly hair and said, see, this person has curly hair because their spirals start at the root and go all the way down to the end. But if you look at the length of the hair that they're showing, it's shoulder length or above hair. Now, when I had shoulder length or above hair, I had spirals all over as well. I had no waves because my hair was shorter and it weighed less. So looking at all of this and not agreeing fully with their findings, this was my reply. At 
the mod. Yes, I did read the specific post on hair types and I respectfully disagree with the opinion. A head full of natural ringlet patterns can't be described as waves just because not all of the ringlets form at the root. You have to take into account the weight of one's hair. The longer it is, the more way down and flatter your roots will be. It's why when people with long curly hair get a shorter cut, they suddenly have more springy curls and a more distinct ringlet pattern throughout their whole head, including the root. If I joined a wavy only Facebook group calling my long hair wavy, I don't think I'd exactly fit in with the majority of the hair patterns in the wavy group. I just don't agree with people subcategorizing another person's hair and telling them what their hair is based on their opinion. Like I literally was told on this group, you're wavy, you're not curly. Like, really? So, this is wavy? Hmm, who knew? Now, it's important to know they are entitled to their opinion, but your opinions are yours and yours alone. They are not facts. So I thought it would be fun on my Instagram channel to ask my followers, hey guys, what do you think? According to this group, I am wavy, I do not have curly hair, and my hair and my opinion is blasphemous. <laughs> so I did a poll and I asked my followers, what do you guys think? Do I have curly hair? Do I have wavy hair? Let's just settle this once and for all. And overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly I got, duh, you're curly. <laughs> now I did have one person who voted wavy, but they actually DM'd me later and said, oh my God, my mistake, I accidentally hit wavy and not curly. So we can put that to rest. So pretty much 100% of my followers believe that I have curly hair and over 100 people have voted in that poll. So yeah, I'm gonna go with them. I actually got a lot of DMs from people who messaged me and said, I think I know what group you're talking about without you even saying their name. <laughs> like I know who you're talking about and how toxic they are and I left the group because they were so toxic. I had one person say they saw a Reddit post about this group because they're so toxic. If you are in a group where you are not allowed to have a different opinion or you are shut down immediately when you form your own opinion or you try to give a different perspective and you're told, read the rules, you might wanna leave that group. But yeah, I just, I had to leave, I had to leave. So my advice to you, if you are a part of any groups that you find to be very toxic, is just leave. There are so many amazing groups out there. Again, I will have links in my description to some of my faves that are very healthy, where you can, you know, network with other people and talk to other curlies and have a good time and not feel judged and not feel like, you know, you're gonna be attacked if you ask a question. Let me know in the comments down below if you participate in any Facebook groups. And let me know if you have any insane, crazy stories about formal groups that you were a part of that you would like to share. I definitely would love to hear them. I know they're gonna be juicy. If you enjoy my content, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit my notification bell so you know when I post a new video. At the end of the day, it's just hair. Love your hair. Learn about your hair, research your hair type, and figure out what works for you. Not what works for somebody else or what somebody else is trying to diagnose you as. Don't listen to them. Listen to your hair. It knows best. Especially because it's growing out of your head. Until next time, keep it curly and always keep it healthy. Peace.